Hello! Hi guys! Thank you for joining me for yet another video. It's Ebony with Living Lavishly. I hope everybody has been doing amazing since last video. I know that I've definitely had my spirits a little higher and I hope that watching my videos helps all of you guys. Um, if you already know what to do, if you are new or if you are returning and you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell. I may even give you five seconds to do so. All right, I hope you did because I really counting on those. But anyways, even though everything has been busy with online school and just a lot of other stuff that I'm dealing with, I wanted to come back with you guys and give you a highly requested video. A lot of people have been asking me like about my college. Well, I'm so sorry. A lot of people have been asking me about my college choice and like why I chose to go to Clark Atlanta or consider an HBCU. Because if you don't know already, I only apply to HBCUs. I think I only applied to one PWI and that was the University of San Francisco. Um, I got accepted and I decided not to go. There's a lot of schools that I've applied to that I've been getting accepted to because believe it or not, I've been getting emails from schools left and right. You've been accepted and I forgot like, oh, I applied to that school. Like I just got an acceptance to Claflin University today. So probably I'll do an update on like all the schools I've been accepted to, like their financial aid offers, blah, 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 this and that. Because I also wanna do a video for you guys on how to pick the college you're gonna go to and how to know what kind of school is right for you. Because again, I feel like sometimes there's a lot of misconception and a lot of like confusion when it comes to knowing what's right to do when it comes to picking a school. Now, with that being said, I am by no ways an admissions counselor. I am not a college expert, but I do have a lot of family and friends and like people that I know that are highly involved in the system of higher education within our country and both of my parents have pursued higher education like meaning masters and things like that well my mom is right now um, but my dad he did some law school stuff too so with that being said I kind of have I kind of know what I'm talking about when it comes to higher education I definitely have done my research um, but anyways <laughs> that's not even what this video is about then today's video, I'm going to be telling you guys 10 reasons why I decided to go to an HBCU. It might be a little over 10, it might be a little under 10, I, I don't know. I, yeah. I'm just going to be telling you guys some reasons why I chose to go to an HBCU and maybe it can like clarify some things for you and maybe help you make your decision. I don't know. But with that being said, let's get into the video. All right, so the first reason that I have for you guys as to why I chose an HBCU, you know you gotta fix your camera angle, yes. Anyways, is diversity. People ask me, how diverse is the student body if you're all black? Like, how diverse, it is, how diverse is it if you're all girls? Like, this and that, because I've gotten all those questions. Um, so the reason I chose to go to Clark or an HBCU in general is because of diversity. Not all the students that go to an HBCU are black. Yes, the student body is predominantly black, that's why it's an HBCU. But at the same time, there's still people of Latino descent, there's people of Asian descent, there's people from different countries around the world. Like, everybody is not just um, a black person from America going to an HBCU, that's not what it is. We have people from all different walks of life. So even while I'm getting the black experience, I'm getting so many other experiences because people are not coming from the same walk of life. Even though they may have the same skin color as you, you guys have two totally different stories and that's what I appreciate about HBCUs there's diversity in the people that are there the stories that they tell the values that they bring there's diversity in all of that and that's one thing that I really valued and the reason why I wanted to go to an HBCU because living in Colorado I've seen a lot of the same thing and I don't I don't really travel the world like that and I don't know a lot and I don't get to interact with people on a daily basis who are like different from me so I wanted to see what it was like to live life from a different perspective and to see even though I am black, this could be a reality for me because my fellow black sister brother is living this reality. That's one reason why I decided to go to an HBCU. And because of the fact that I'm not just going to be going to school with black people, there's going to be Asian people there, there is white people there, there is Hispanic people there. They go to HBCUs in as large of numbers, obviously not because I mean, I'm not trying to stereotype anything, but I feel like they'd be a little uncomfortable, but I mean, there's, uh, they're not obviously not as in big of numbers. I understand that, but they are still there, which definitely contributes to our 
experience that we have at the HBCUs and that is one reason why I chose to attend an HBCU is because I want the diversity. I don't want to keep being around people just like me because even though they have my skin color they can still be very different for me and I value different experiences and different walks of life and I really look forward to that and yeah like I just want I wanted something different and I wanted a diverse experience. Alrighty, so the next reason that I have for you guys is the community that they have at HBCUs. So as you probably know, a PWIs, and if you don't know what that is, a predominantly white institution, a PWI. So at those schools, there's a lot of people on the campus. Like we're talking thousands of people. Like within your class, you can have stadium style seating and it can be like 500 people in your class. So if there's 500 people in your class and your teacher probably never interacts with you and you only interact with the aide on occasion, like how many connections do you really think you're going to be building with your professor or with fellow students? And if you're not building those connections, there's no community. And if there's no community, how is there networking? How are you getting those so-called opportunities for internships or for study abroad opportunities in other countries or connections to people who work in your field? More than likely, you're not going to get that. And your professors, I feel like, are your biggest channel to receiving that in college. And that is why I chose an HBCU because I didn't want to just be a number. I want my professor to know my name. I want to know the different people in my class and be able to have meaningful discussions and be able to learn and listen because that's what I'm paying for, a higher education, something that's better, not worse than what I was in high school because in high school, I did not have stadium style seating. There was 25 people in the class. I knew my teacher. I knew all the kids in my class and like I had somewhat of a connection with some of them. But in my classroom at the HBCU, especially because I'm paying over $30,000 a year, I wanna have a connection with the people in my classroom and the professors that are teaching me because with my professors having that connection, I can have someone to lean on because this college experience by no means is going to be easy for us not for me not for any of you I mean it may be easier for some of you but I mean you're going to have those bumps in the road where you're going to need someone to depend on and if you barely know like five people on campus because your campus is that big and your professors don't know you who are you supposed to lean on like the, the dynamics of needing someone doesn't change just because you become a college student to me it seems like it becomes more needed than ever in your life so I need those connections I need that sense of community and not even just for like educational endeavors but just like for the sake of be like oh girl you want to go out to lunch and being able to know the name of more than 10 people in my campus and being able to have a connection with people and being able to know somebody and feel like I belong and I am a part of this and I'm not just a number and I'm not just somebody that people see walking around the campus. Now by no means am I saying that everybody at Clark Atlanta is gonna know me because that's, that would be stupid of me to say because that's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying because it is like probably on a, it is on a smaller scale than let's say University of Denver. Like I'm gonna know more people and have more meaningful connections. And to me, I really value the connections that I have with people. That is something that I really strive for because in a world where even though it seems we're so interconnected, yet in reality we are so disconnected, I really strive for things like that. To have that sense of community and somebody to lean on is very important to me. And at HBCUs, that's a big thing because they have a lot of different events. And being on the AUC, I don't just have my Clark Atlanta family. I have my Spelman sisters and my Morehouse brothers to lean on as well. So I just think that's very important. And that's one reason why I chose to go to an HBCU and ultimately Clark Atlanta because community and having someone to depend on means a lot to me. Like I really needed that. I really wanted that because in high school, I always found myself feeling estranged and different from everybody else. And as if I was just like, like, there was them and then there was me. And I don't want to feel like that in college. Like, I know I'm not going to be cool with friends with everybody, but I want to have at least a group of friends. And I do because I've met a lot of great girls that are going to Clark Atlanta and Spelman and just being on the AC. And I can tell that we're going to have great friendship and make a lot of nice memories over these four years. So I'm really excited for that group of girls. All right, so the next one that I have for you guys is the fostering of black success. So let me not like make it seem like at a PWI, they're not caring about black success. But let me tell you something, they're not nurturing it like HBCUs are because I feel like college is a rough time and it's not just gonna be a straight shot for anyone. Whether you go to a PWI or whether you go to an HBCU, regardless of where you go, it's not gonna be a straight shot for anyone. But I feel like 
with being minorities, it's already, we already have another level of stress and another level of barriers against us when it is trying. When we are trying to pursue that um, higher education, and I feel like in PWIs, like I said before, they don't have like that more supportive community environment. So it's harder for them to get the resources that they need for their minority students. So most of the time, they end up having a lower graduation rate of black students and of minority students in general. And that just, if, if you can't like get through the higher education and reach your commencement, like how are you gonna get to your field? And that's the thing, and some people end up getting so defeated and so tried and everything else that they just don't wanna do it. And I feel like, don't get me wrong, PWIs, they are producing black successful people. But I feel like in HBCs, we are fostering black success. We're not just teaching you how to be a lawyer or a doctor or an architect or an engineer. We are teaching you how to be a black engineer, a black lawyer, a black doctor, all of that. We're teaching you that you can be black and successful, that you don't have to choose one or the other. You don't have to say, oh, I'm black, so I can't be successful, or I'm successful, so I have to assimilate to the European culture. No. At HBCUs, they're teaching you that you can be black and you can be successful. And both of those fit in the same sentence, period. That's what I mean by HBCUs foster black success. They're teaching us that we don't have to become somebody else to be successful. And they're helping us and they're doing whatever you can to like the commencement ceremony. They don't want us to become another statistic. They don't want to treat us as like charity cases or things like that because we're human. We're people, Real we're here for higher education just like everybody else. And don't get me wrong, PUWIs, I'm sure not all of them do it, and the ones that do, I'm sure they don't intentionally do it. Don't get me wrong, some of them probably do. But I'm saying with HBCUs, they're definitely here to see the success of black people, obviously. That's why they're open. And I feel like that's a good thing, because especially as you get to try to pursue those higher fields, you're going to need that more care and that one-on-one -on -one and those and those good talks and those good networking opportunities that some black students at HBCUs just don't get. I mean, oh, some students at PWIs, some black students at PWIs don't get it as they would at an HBCU. I'm so sorry. I definitely misspoke on that. But yeah, I definitely feel like that's a thing that they foster black success, not just success, but black success at an HBCU. And I feel like that's so important when you're trying to compete in corporate America and the upper sector. Alrighty, so the next one that I have for you guys is the AUC community. Now I know this isn't like um, applicable to all HBCUs because all HBCUs don't have the AUC. If you don't know what the AUC is, it's the Atlanta University Center. It is made up of Morehouse, it is made up of Spelman and Clark Atlanta. Those are the three schools on the AUC. It's one big community and things like that. And that's one reason why I um, chose to go to Clark. I either ultimately wanted to go to Clark or Spelman, but because I got denied to Spelman for the semester, that was obviously not an option. So I was going to be illustrious Clark Atlanta University for the fall semester. And I feel like um, I really wanted this community because I don't just have the opportunities and networking availabilities that are available to me at Clark. I've heard in a lot of videos and like talking to a lot of other students that I have the opportunity to get networking opportunities from Spelman and from Morehouse. And with that being said, because I'm not a Spelman Morehouse student, may it be harder for me? Yes, but anything worth having is not easy. So I feel like if it's available, if it's available to me and it's attainable and all I have to do is work for it, then I'm willing to do that to get those networking opportunities because some people don't have that. Like other HBCUs are not on a big community with three other, well, with two other amazing schools to where they can get opportunities. And I wanted to be able to take advantage of that because I'm able to form connections, not just on my campus of Park Atlanta, but with Spelman and with Morehouse and all of that. And I'm so excited for that. And I'm so ready and not even just the teachers and the professors and the networking, but to form relationships with all the other amazing young black and African-American and just other individuals in general that are going to um, Spelman and Morehouse. I'm so excited to form connections with them and just be able to strive and grow and get that back together. Like I would see all of us succeed. So I think that's going to be a good thing to have connections and support of all three schools and not just Clark. And I feel like that's an amazing thing and a lot of people can't say they have that. And I'm so fortunate to be able to say So the next one that I have for you guys is the classroom environment. So what I mean by the classroom environment, as I've said before in the video, and a lot of PWIs, you'll notice that they have what's called stadium style seating. And that's because there's over 500 people in your class. 
and most of the times you don't even see the professor some people wouldn't even know who the professor is like they only know because his name or her name or whoever's name it is is on the syllabus like that's the only reason they know the name of the professor i've heard college students that go to pwi say they've never met the professor face to face they've never seen this person in their life and they've interacted with the teacher's age they can count the times on their hands um and they should my mom is an HBCU, and like I said, I know a lot of people who went to an HBCU. I know that that's not how it is. They don't have that stadium style seating. Like, I think a lot of people, like, yeah, there was like 25 people in my class. So basically, what it is in high school, and your professor will know you by name and they'll make a connection with you and they'll be able to help you achieve your goals because that's another thing. Like, with this, I'm not just coming to take notes, write a couple papers. I'm here for connections. These professors have connections in the fields that I'm looking to go for. And if they don't have a direct connection, they could connect me to somebody who does have that connection. So I'm really looking forward to that opportunity of being able to have that support in the classroom environment where we can have classroom discussions because how are you supposed to have a meaningful discussion with 500 people and you can't some people don't even know the professor like how does that work and like i believe that discussion and collaboration is a big part of learning in the classroom well at least it is for me i can't speak for everybody but i like learning collaboratively and i like learning with other people and by the side of other people so yeah that's definitely one reason why i chose to go to an hbcu because i didn't want to be a number amongst 499 plus other people that's it so the next one that i have for you guys is learning about being black so i understand that may have come off the wrong to a lot of people being black obviously no there's no owner's manual like an instruction booklet on how to be black that's not what i mean let me rephrase that you're learning more about black history than you know you're gonna learn a lot of stuff that you never even knew was out there stuff that they're not going to teach you in american history stuff that you're not going to learn in school you're going to learn about what it means to be black what it means what black history is made up of what our ancestors went through in order for us to be who we are have the opportunities that we are today that's what i mean when i say learning about what it means to be black learning where you come from and about the people you came before that's what i mean by that when i say learning about being black so um obviously in pwis unless you're majoring in like african-american studies even then you're probably just going to get a more in-depth version of what they teach you in american history that's probably all you're going to get in But they say that in HBCUs, every day is a history lesson, regardless of whether you're an engineering major or you're a women's studies major. Every day in an HBCU is a history lesson in some way or form on your black history. And I feel like being black in America, the biggest flex that we have, the biggest weapon that we have is knowing our history and knowing who we are and who we come from. Because they always try to take that away from us. They always don't want to teach us because they know if we knew, we would be powerful. Like, so I feel like in HBCUs, they really do equip us with the knowledge of where we come from and who we are as a people, and that's really important. Because I've talked to a lot of people, and they're like, I knew about some civil rights leaders. Like, they know about you, Rosa Parks, Martin Luther King, all that kind of stuff. They know those people, Harry Tubman, because they're widely, commonly talked about when you think of civil rights in the face of that movement. Those are the people that you think about. When you think about slavery, you think about Harry Tubman, you think about soldier or true frederick douglas like they teach about those people in school but a lot of other people that people should know about they don't really know about but those people are just as pivotal and even more pivotal in american history in ways that you don't even know and i feel like that's really important to know and people have said they've definitely learned that and taken that from the nature scene and it's one of the most valuable things they can learn like even more valuable than the field they're trying to go into because they're never going to tell you in school that as black people this is where you come from this is what you've been through and i feel like that's so important when learning when learning we're just going through life we're just going through life and i feel like that's something that we need to have with us and regardless i guess bottom of the line what i'm trying to say is that they teach us that and they give us that because without that a lot of us would never know where we come from and we would never have those opportunities 